a school like Michigan is what you make of it. The opportunities are there, but it does take initiative and uh, you know, being an enterprising young person to, to take advantage of them. I'm Greg Beers. I'm a principal naval architect and marine engineer here at uh, Bristol Harbor Group. We're located in Bristol, Rhode Island. Um, I'm an owner of the company with one other Michigan alum, Corey Wood, who graduated with me uh, from the Department of Naval Architecture and Marine Engineering and got my master's uh, as well in Naval Architecture and Marine Engineering. In 2010, Corey and I bought another Naval Architecture and Marine Engineering consultancy located in uh, Houston, Texas, and renamed it the Shearer Group, uh, named after Ed Shearer, the former owner of that company. Um, and uh, Ed is a Michigan alumnus as well. <laughs> so definitely a lot of Michigan connections there. Um, that's a theme that I've seen in a lot of these interviews, so that's really great that you've had that experience as well. Um, kind of discussing a little bit more about the companies that you're a part of, what do each of those specialize in or focus on? Here at Bristol Harbor Group, we focus on uh, theoretically what we call the blue water sector. So we design ships and barges and floating assets for use on coastal routes. The Shearer Group in Houston focuses on what's called the brown water. So we're blue water, they're brown water uh, sector, which means the inland sector. So those are the towboats and barges that ply the Mississippi and Ohio rivers and the whole inland river system, uh, as well as ferries. That makes sense. So very diverse, you have a lot of options and that means more work for you guys because you have both capabilities, which is really great super diverse. That's the, the key to our company is our diversity. Um, we do do government work, uh, mm -hmm. which is um, been, is a big part of what we do today. We, we do work for NASA, the Navy, the Army, uh, Coast Guard, a uh, whole NOAA, Park Service, a whole, whole slew of federal and state agencies. Um, and, and one of the reasons is, is those cons those, those entities are some of the largest consumers of naval architecture services in our country. That's, did, were you prepared for that being an aspect of your job so heavily when you were studying NAME or, or did you kind of think it was going to be all about the, the building hands-on part? Like all starry-eyed naval architects, I assumed I would mostly design yachts, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't. We, we started our company designing yachts and it was fun. Uh, as I said, I have a couple uh, actually small boats that I designed or we designed. My interest was always in exactly the market we're in, which is the, the tugs and barges. That, that was uh, always my focal point. My partners, when we started the firm, were more interested in the yacht stuff. So we always had a yacht and um, commercial um, focus. Mm -hmm. um, and the traditional naval art program at Michigan prepares you more for the commercial tugs and barges government type work than it does the yacht work. The really high-end complicated uh, technology associated with those with you know modern yachts today are taught after really after school. That's that that's more of a on-the-job training kind of a thing. So Michigan did prepare us exceedingly well for the commercial work we do today. Yeah. Do you feel like it prepares you in terms of being able to find good jobs as well? The networking opportunities were good or what other aspects of the program do you think have put you where you are today? Well, not the name program per se, but the University of Michigan uh, introduced me to my wife. So <laughs> I have everything in the world to thank for. Uh, biggest thing I think Michigan did for me was the internship programs that, that Michigan uh, Naval Arc in particular offered. I really fell into sort of the Michigan program. So my sophomore year, Michigan encourages you to go to a shipyard if you can. And I went to Maine to what a company called Bath Ironworks, uh, building destroyers. And I uh, was able to work in the noise and vibration department. The ability to get to know every part of the ship was really, really great. And, and it provided me with uh, an excellent um, you know, base level. Then the next year, the next summer, I was able to get an internship at a design firm doing tugs and barges and the kind of design work I wanted to do out in, um, in Seattle. And then after that, I had gotten involved with a robot. Michigan had a very early um, underwater robotic, uh, it was called a remote operated vehicle, an ROV that could dive to the depths of 
actually the deepest depths of the Great Lakes um, and, you know, fairly deep in the, in the ocean. And um, I worked on that, uh, that the summer between my uh, senior year and my, uh, my graduate school year uh, and um, got to go on all sorts of ships and explore shipwrecks and see all sorts of neat things, fly, actually flying, flying the ROV. The Naval Architecture Department actually has a huge water uh, hydrodynamics laboratory in West Engineering. It's the length of a football field uh, full of water, instrumented, and that's where we test, we do hydrodynamic testing. Anyway, we learned to fly our ROV in that nice sort of giant swimming pool, pool, if you will, and then take it out to the Great Lakes and explore things. So each of those internships were fabulous. I mean, just each one gave me something different and I learned so much, made lots of connections. But then I, when I graduated from, with my master's, I, I figured the best thing for a young naval architect to do was would be to go to sea. I knew I was coming to Rhode Island, I moved to Rhode Island, and then I just looked for jobs on, on boats. And then it turned out that NOAA, the National Oceanographic Atmospheric Administration, they had a research pro uh, program that had an office in Connecticut, cl pretty close by. And I got the job and um, I went to sea on a whole bunch of different um, oceanographic ships from the Great Lakes to the North Atlantic. I was in caught in an incredible storm, guy broke his leg, we're given a morphine. Like I saw, I saw the, the sea stories I wanted to, not, I feel badly for that poor chief engineer, of course, but I, I, I saw the things I wanted to sort of see in that, in that experience. Thanks to my work at Michigan, I got exactly that opportunity and not just on one ship. I wasn't just on one tug or one ship. Briefly, like what other things on campus were you involved in before I move into more of your career path? You know, I, I did the, the quarter deck honor society at, in the Naval Art Department, things like that. And those are kind of traditional experiences I think that everybody has. I liked it a lot. Uh, then um, I was very involved, very interested in research. So Jerry White and I asked for uh, so, so an opportunity to do some independent research. And specifically, we wanted to work in the Marine Hydrodynamics Laboratory. So that was a, you know, a great opportunity to, uh, to do that research with a friend. I mean, to, the, to this day, we've gone back and done similar testing with barges we've designed in that lab. So I started a club, I don't know what, myself and some friends. We, we got a bunch of people, like 40 people were interested in doing something. And, and we chose the solar electric boat. And we went to work uh, designing and begging for money from, you know, Ford and all these places. And we ended up uh, building a boat. We had a very specific mission to go as fast as we could, in essence, on two car batteries. And we ended up competing and taking third. Since then, that team has kind of disbanded and it became the human powered submarine team. Yeah. So those, those are some things that I really sought out while I was at Michigan and, uh, you know, Michigan gave me the opportunity, you know, to, to, to capitalize on them. That's really amazing. And it all seems like results of you just putting yourself out there and trying things that you care about and are interested in. Uh, yeah, that, that's exactly right. Yeah. And, and, and I, I think, I think that's, I think that's the key, uh, is to get out there and, and, um, try different things and see what you like and what you don't like. You, know? mm -hmm. well, you mentioned that you had started your company early on right after you um, graduated. So can you kind of walk us through the years between graduating college and kind of the place you are at this point? Absolutely. Yeah. So four of us started a business in my room on, on Walnut Street um, in Ann Arbor. And, and we would sit there and crafted the bylaws and all that kind of silliness. and. So we, um, we decided to, we, we were depend, trying to figure out where we wanted to, to move to. And we, we chose Rhode Island very specifically because there were a lot of boat building. There was a lot of boat building at the time. And we decided we would all live together, which we did. So we, we moved out here, we all lived together and then we all went and found other jobs. We lived in this house together and we, with it, we rented next across the street, a small little office. Cause we decided if we're gonna work weekends and evenings, starting a business, it'll be nice. So it was a Waterview office, which we still have to this day. And we were getting little jobs here and little jobs there, you know. Um, and then one day, this guy from Wisconsin called up and he needed a naval architect. That was a big enough job that the first guy, which was Corey, could quit his day job and come to work. After that, we got more work and more work, just out pounding, pounding doors and until, um, I was able to uh, 
come on full time. So, so today, the company is just myself and Corey. And when did you um, acquire the Shearer Group? So we decided, let's, we're smart, let's start a boat building company. We started a business, it was called Bristol Harbor Boat. And it was so cool because we got to design this boat with nobody else telling us what they want. And we did that, we built about 50 of them. But what, what we realized was we weren't making money like we do in engineering. And so we basically figured out we should stick to what we're good at, which is designing, not building. In 2010, 11 timeframe, we sold, we sold the business. Um, and when we did, that's when we bought the Shearer. Ed Shearer was getting towards the, what he thought was the end of his career. Of course, he's still working for us here 10 years later. And um, he, he was looking to sell. And so now we are the biggest designer of inland towboats and barges in the country. Kind of what does a typical work day look, for, look like for you? Just a normal day at work. My day starts out very early. I review a lot of financial stuff in the morning, actually before I come to work, make sure I understand where everything is, the company, answer some emails, do that kind of stuff. I come in and the first thing I do is I plan. I plan my, I plan my day very, very rigorously. And then I pretty much spend the rest of my day reacting. In other words, um, I'm either doing this facing a client or I'm doing this facing a team within my group. Because my, what we do, everything we do, most everything we do is collaborative, right? There's very few, there are very few things that an able architect does by themselves. Most of what they do, unless it's some specific analysis, is if it's a design, it's a collaborative design. Somebody's doing the fuel system, somebody else is doing the structure, somebody else is doing the hydrostatics, and it has to all work together. So uh, I spend a lot of time on, on Zoom on the projects that I'm involved in, primarily on the client facing side. I spend time with those teams, making sure, listening and listening to the project manager, making sure that the, uh, you know, that, that, that the right questions are being asked and that the design is progressing. And then then in the, usually in the later afternoon, I get to uh, sort of reflect and, and, and think about my next day. And so what advice do you have for students that are either prospective or currently in Michigan engineering or specifically in naval Arch architecture marine engineering? And kind of similarly, if you could give yourself advice as your own as a college student yourself, um, what would you pay attention to? What, would, what do you wish you had done? My biggest advice to a Michigan engineering student is to take advantage of as much of the opportunities that Michigan offers as you can. So that can include internships, being part of the teams, that can include doing independent research. And what I didn't do are some of these programs like Blue Lab, they go and they help people in these countries and they build water purification and whatnot. I didn't know about that, but that would be a great, you know, I think that would be a great thing that Michigan offers. The biggest piece of advice for the Michigan engineers is take advantage of what the school has to offer. Engineering is a great field, even if you don't plan to be an engineer. There, there, people do all sorts of different things with an engineering degree, um, but you how to think analytically, and um, I think that's probably one of the biggest values. I think, I think that engineering is much broader than it seems. It's a Michigan engineering degree, that's, that's what they're looking at. I just don't think people should be afraid. If it interests you, if you like water, you like boats, you like this, or you like airplanes, or you like robots, I don't think people should be uh, worried about being too narrow. As with everything in life, don't be afraid to follow what interests you. Even if, it, like, even if it isn't the most logical thing in the world, you're going to do so much better if you're doing something that is.